storm's coming. Our grain is going to fall. This is Dean McClung, our Cremonolux. Welcome. All right. I got something. I got something. Listen up. Some more, uh, some more thoughts on this restroom mania currently going on in this country. Um, I gotta tell you, it's unbelievable. I mean, people are just, what can I say? Unfucking believable. All right. Where exactly, when exactly, did this silly notion that men and women need to be segregated from each other in the restaurant? Are all humans the new niggers? Or serfs? Slaves? Everybody pees, everybody shits. It's just nature. It's the way it works. It's the way human beings are. You eat it, you drink it, you poop it, you piss it. It's just the way it is. Everybody does that. Or they're dead. You understand? You can't avoid it. It's just ridiculous. To make all this fuss over which restroom you use. Refer to the old, the, um, what do you call the ancient Greeks who figured out this problem and probably avoided this problem altogether by simply not being freaking stupid. And this was a long time ago, you know, when people as a rule were not really very bright uh, by comparison to bright people. <clears throat> but apparently the Greeks were smarter than the modern Americans. Uh, apparently. At least as far as the bathroom facilities was concerned. You gotta pee? There's the toilet. Use it. But I'm a woman! Well, yeah, we can see that. You got tits. And oh, you don't have a pecker. Hmm. I guess you're going to have to sit down or squat to be. Go at it, girl. We don't care. Because this is a bathroom or a restroom. And, you know, that's what it's for. To pee, to shit, wash your hands afterwards. If you want. <laughs> Wash your hands after you use the restroom. Alright. Um, that's important, I guess. And, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just shot that idea all to hell. Well, I didn't, actually. But, if I had the time, I would. I'm pretty sure that urine is sterile. I've heard that from medical professionals. I know, I know. Wash your hands up. If you want to wash your hands, wash your hands. If you use antibacterial soap, you might be putting yourself at risk because we all know, well, recent, recent uh, news articles have mentioned maybe like they're not good for you. Uh, not good for the land, uh, not good for the environment, and not good for you, and probably not a good idea in general. Oh well, well, but let's move on. Paranoia! We're paranoid! I got germs on my fingers! Oh god, I'm gonna die! Hysteria! Paranoia! That's a mental illness, and most Americans suffer from it. Hysteria and paranoia. Alright, let me go ahead and read this. 
Let me read this. Alright. Oh, well, I kind of covered that already. It's no secret. You know? You gotta be. You gotta shit. Everybody knows that. Who doesn't know that? What person, what human being on this planet doesn't got, get the idea that, you know, hey, guess what? I feel like I gotta piss. And, uh, you know, and if you're like, you know, a two-day-old baby, it's sort of like, they probably don't have any words to describe that concept, but, you know, pee, and, you know, and then you got the diaper thing to deal with. But if you're over four, you probably don't need, you know, to be told which restaurant. I'm a girl. See, this is complicated. I'll try to keep it as simple as I can. The day you're born, and you know, in civilized countries, I assume it works everywhere in America, for example, that, you know, the instant you're born, you know, you pop out of your mother's womb, and the doctor looks down and he says, it's a boy, or it's a girl, or he says, I don't know which it is, it could be both, it could be neither, I don't know, and that's another subject altogether. Um, Oddly enough, it does relate to restrooms, but uh, let's not go there right now. Let's just talk about <sighs> stupid ideas. All right, the point is, you know, the segregation of, of males and females and neuters, um, or neithers, or both. <laughs> and on a side note, I've never actually seen an amorphodite. Uh, that is to say, a human being with both male and female genitals. Um, curious about that. I'd like to see that. I know, I know. The internet, they've got pictures and shit. They probably even have porn sites with videos showing women with breasts and vaginas and and dicks and uh, fucking and shit and, and you know maybe they, I'm sh probably the, everything's on the internet so I'm sure it's there somewhere so uh, uh, I'm not that's not what I'm talking about I, you know I'm talking about in real life you know like real flesh and blood people like me um, if you were here in my office or my studio, you would have, oh, there you are, and you could probably even reach out and touch me on the arm if you wanted just to make sure that I'm actually here, uh, and not a ghost or some sort of god, that's logical nonsense, but that was a, it was subliminal message in there, did you catch it? You know, um, mythological nonsense, you keep putting that in there throughout the show maybe probably won't notice it from here on out. But it's there. It's there. So, why segregate? See, separate but equal is kind of like what, what they're saying. And I think we've already been through that phase of human development back in, you know, in America anyway, uh, back in the 60s and so on. You know, separate but equal. Talking about blacks, of course. Oh, see, there I said that word and now I gotta go off on another tangent. Uh, the word blacks is, is, a, is a word that describes color, okay? Like, a black. Uh, don't tell me that black and white is not a color. Bullshit. I'm an artist. I know this. I know about this. Just don't, just don't irritate me with your stupid, pointless arguments about this, okay? You're not an artist, so shut up. Don't want to hear about it. Um, but if you are an artist, then think whatever you want. And don't, just don't, well, you can't tell me it's radio. You can't talk back. I like that. I can say what I want, and you can listen or turn the channel. That's up to you. I don't give a shit. Well, I do. I want you to listen. Because you might learn something. And therefore, be a better person. The more things you know, the better you are. Alright, so what I'm saying is... Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. school sound effect um, 
class is in session. All right, and you're late if you're just tuning in. Uh, okay, so separate but equal. Not a good idea. It, it didn't work with the black and the white folks, you know. I heard it a lot back in the 60s. I was, I was alive back then, by the way. Uh, many of you may not have been alive in the 60s. Which, uh, hmm, it's kind of hard to describe it to you if you're not aware. I mean, it's, how, did, how would I even just begin to describe the 60s to, to somebody that was born in like 1989 or 2001 or something like that? Uh, I have to work on that. Maybe I could describe it in a way that people under 20 would understand it. Mm, maybe. Maybe. So anyway, taking a break. Be back in a second. See? What did I say? Second. Um, all in all. All right. So segregation is, is basically the concept around this male and female thing. Separate but equal. Um, uh, which is ironic in today's world where everybody's running around like, Oh, we want to be equal. We want to be equal. And... Uh, I don't even know where you got the idea that you're equal to anybody. Um, I remember back in the 60s and thereabouts that, you know, being equal was, um, wasn't really popular. Oh, I know, there were kids, they wanted to be fit in and be like other kids and so they could be, you know, get along and so forth, have friends and stuff, hang out with their buddies and uh, that's, uh, that's all well and good and that's, Still true, I suppose, and always will be, because it's just human nature. However, separate but equal is an idea that uh, we're separate, but we're not really equal. <laughs> like, I'm a white guy, and you're not, so I'm more equal than you. And other stupid, nonsensical arguments about segregation back in the days of... Uh, rampant bigotry and racism and hate for people of a different body tone. Um, it's just silly. So now we're going to go through that with the male and female thing. So, okay, separate but equal is good and uh, then the other guy chimes in and says, oh, no, we can't have that. Okay, and I'm here to tell you that if you, if you are a person a human being and there's a restroom and uh, why didn't the sign just say restroom you know and there it is and that means you know go in do your business and uh, you don't really have to be separate from the other gender like if you're a woman or a man and you're, well not one or the other if you're a woman and you go into a restroom you do your business and then you go over to the sink and they usually have mirrors there uh, and you go to the sink and you wash your hands and you dry your hands and maybe you uh, puff up your hair a little bit or whatever. Uh, I suppose even touch up your makeup is uh, okay. I mean, fine. Bathrooms, you know, do that maybe. Uh, then you leave. And you may or may not talk to the other people that may be in there. And you may not even acknowledge them. You just, well, you don't want to run over them and walk on them and shit. You know, you know they're real, just like you. Uh, and then you go about your business. You know, leave. Go out of the restroom and you know, continue shopping or whatever. You can do that. You can actually wash your hands at a sink in a public restroom standing next to a man who's also washing his hands. Seriously, you can do that. It's quite possible. It's, it's not even freaky. It's just, just do it and shut up and Go about your business. You know, it, it reminds me of those days back, you know, whites only, and then the other one, coloreds. <sighs> My mother still uses the word colored. You know, bless her heart, she's 90 years old. <sighs> and, you know, she wants to tell you about somebody with a dark skin and she says she was a colored girl okay well what color was she mom 
And then she said, black. And I said, uh, actually, she wasn't black. And that word black means black, not brown. And that just goes along with the whole mind bender agenda of turning the English language into babble. And, you know, so nobody knows what anybody's talking about. And uh, that's pretty good. That's already been done. Uh, you know, the English language is now babble, officially. Might as well call it Bablish. With a capital B. Because English is lost on most people. In America, at least. Uh, because I say stuff in English, and people are like saying, Oh, what do you say? You know, I'm like, what? It's English. I mean, how long you lived in this country? How long, you know, have you been speaking English? Or what? You started learning English when you were like, like six months old and shit. You don't know what English is? English. Words mean what they mean, by the way. They don't mean the opposite of what they mean. I get a lot of that today. Particularly in the government and the laws that the government uh, make. Uh, you know, like, a word means what it means. And then they say, oh, no, it doesn't mean that. It means something totally opposite. Well, I understand. I was, you know, the hippies were around back in the 60s. And they would say, hey, man, that's really bad, man. And meaning it was good. <laughs> so maybe that's when it all started back in the 60s with the hippies saying, that's cool, meaning it was hot. And, um, yep, I'm going to blame it on the hippies. They started the train downhill. Like, uh, what did the guy Merle Haggard say? Like a, tr like a snowball rolling downhill, headed for hell. Yeah. Well, the hippies started it by changing the meaning of words and using them as slang and stuff. Well, the fact is, they didn't change the word. The word still means what it means. They just used it in a slang sense, and slang isn't really, you know, official English. It's like uh, the word kids. Um, I shouldn't get onto that. It's another thing. I haven't even read the thing I was going to read you yet. All right, all right, I got time. Just hang in there. It's all interesting, really. Um, well, if you've got an inquiring mind, anyway, and an open mind. So segregation, separate but equal. It's a stupid idea, and they never should have started it, and and, and they should never have separated this to genders in the first place. And uh, some puritanistic redneck moron back in whatever, 1700s or 1500s or some time or another. I haven't done the research to give you an exact date. So just, you know, if you want to look it up, fine. Uh, I'll look it up later. The point is, it's just a stupid idea. You know, we're all people. We all got a piss. We all got a shit. And, you know, if you're out in the Walmart and you want to, then just go to the bathroom, uh, restroom. Uh, you see, it's not a bathroom. In the, uh, see, public bathrooms don't exist anymore, I don't think. Maybe somewhere. <clears throat> you know, a public place where you could go in, take a piss, take a shit, and then take a bath. Uh, restrooms are, uh, well, they don't have bathtubs and they don't have showers. They just have toilets and maybe a sink to wash your hands. So, what I'm saying is, the idea of separate is a bad idea, and I'm sorry that people invented the idea, out of thin air, by the way, I'm like, oh, we got to keep them separate for some reason, I don't know why, you know, what, they might actually see somebody who is not, a, you know, I'm a guy, and I just, oh, I just saw a woman sit down on a toilet to pee. Oh, my God, it's the end of the world. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, if you haven't seen a woman pee, and you're, like, over the age of 20, you're just not trying. <laughs> uh, if you were raised in a family where there was a mother and a father, that's a male and a female, and maybe a couple of kids besides, you know, maybe you got a brother or a sister, and you're like a brother or a sister, it's a male or a female. 
And if you live in a house with people like men and women and brothers and sisters and, and cousins and shit coming to visit and shit, and, and you haven't seen the opposite's gender take a pee, your life is being suppressed. I mean, come on. And I think probably in today's world, there isn't anybody on the planet, if they have an internet connection, cannot at some point go on the internet and find a video of, you know, somebody being male, female, because it's on there. Trust me. I know it's there. I've seen it. Well, I didn't dwell on it, but it was there. And I saw it. And I said, shit. I mean, that guy's being, and that woman's being, and there's some kind of sexual application of that idea somewhere, but that's beside the point. Um, doesn't turn me on, really. I must not be normal. Shit. So anyway, let me finish reading this, just to make sure I get it in there. All right. Gotta say this. And it won't sit well with a lot of people. Those who have been manipulated and indoctrinated to the point of hysteria. Hysteria runs rampant. It does. It runs rampant in this society. It is created, invented hysteria. No reason for it. Just the mind benders created it and perpetuated it upon us all. And, uh, oh, by the way, when you're talking about, you know, I'm always here, somebody, oh, you're a freak, you're a creepy, you're a, you're a sicko, because you want to look at little girls peeing and shit. I don't know where they come up with this idea. I never said that. It's another thing wrong with Americans. They just jump to conclusions and make assumptions all over the place. They don't, they don't even bother to concern themselves with the facts, the reality, the truth of the matter. They, they don't even bother trying to get to the uh, get to, to the details of, of something. They just jump to a conclusion and, oh, you're a pervert, a sicko, uh, you know, whatever. And uh, because they've been brainwashed to think that way, apparently. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm a total blooming idiot. My brain is like totally empty of anything. And like, I'm just going to let the garbage people put garbage in my head. And then you grow up and you're an idiot. It's another thing. Don't call me an idiot. I'm not an idiot. Anybody that knows me knows I'm not an idiot. And if you don't know me, then stop making assumptions. If I say something and you think it's stupid, then, you know, fine. You can think it's stupid if you want. That's okay. I don't give a fuck. But, you know, don't call me stupid. Because I'm not. I got proof. Lots of it. And, uh... Taking one thing I said out of context, of course, is another thing that people do that. Oh, you just took that totally out of context, and you just decided and assumed that what I said meant whatever you thought it meant that has nothing to do with what I actually said. You know, English. Turn it into Babel. Alright. Finish this. Continuing along. For one thing, the hysteria is directed away from the justifiable reasons for having hysteria like the fake war on terror the illegal and insane war on drugs the war against nature the war against our freedom the truth of the matter is there is very little actual threat from pedophiles and sex fiends in America very little let me explain it to you let me explain why statistically Statistically, I don't know what, 320 million people in America? That's a lot of people. And most of them are males or females. How many of them, how many of these, let's just round it off to 300 million. Because there's like 15 or 20 million people in this country that are like, way, way, way young, like babies, like infants. Uh, you know, like six months old. Yet. They're like, they don't count really, because they're not even aware of things. 
Yeah. Uh, then you got like people that are like 98 years old and senile or suffering from Alzheimer's and stuff and they're like, oh, I don't even remember my own name and, oh, by the way, I pissed my pants. Um, I don't mean to be putting them down or anything because, you know, I'm going to be old one of these days too. Hopefully, I live to be older than I am now. So, this hysteria is created, it's it's invented by the mind benders. They have an agenda. They're trying to twist our minds, twist our thoughts, put stupid ideas in our heads, and um, just pretty much make us dumb. And this e equal thing in there, by the way, uh, that that's a no. I'm not going to talk about that yet. So anyway, there's a war against nature. There's a war against English. For that matter, there's a war against drugs, there's a war against terrorism, all of that bullshit. It's absolute, utter bullshit. So they create this hysteria to get everybody all confused, and, and uh, so nobody knows what they're doing. And so you can't understand me when I talk to you, because your brain has been damaged by these mind benders and you've allowed it to happen because you know you did have a choice you know you were growing up you were young and you said oh I want to put some shit in my head and then you go out and you find people that are reliable and honest and dependable and will tell you the truth and then you know you listen to them and you learn stuff and I don't mean you go to public schools because you don't learn shit there you learn stupid shit and you learn that you know you should just submit to the tyranny of the state and uh, you don't have a right to your own life, your own body, or any of that stuff, and that's just... And then they pull you full of fake history, which is not even close to being true. So, the thing is, hysteria. And uh, all the people have been whipped into a hysterical mob, frenzy, and, oh, God, some guy might put on a dress and go into a restroom and, you know, look at my little girl taking a piss. Uh, statistically speaking, uh, well, in the first place, so, what? Big deal. Looking at people that you see in public places like public restrooms, um, they're in there doing what they do. And so, uh, you know, if I'm dressed in drag and I got to pee, I'm going to go into a restroom. And, you know, I shouldn't have to pick one. I should just say, oh, it says restroom, and I got to pee, and that's where I go to do that. And I'm going in the restroom and take a piss. You know, pull up my dress, and lean up against the urinal, and piss. People would go freaking ape shit if, if I was to do that. I'm not going to do that. Well, I might do it as an experiment, but I don't want to die, so I'm not going to, you know, the freaking redneck idiots would probably kill me. Oh my god! You're taking a piece and you're standing... Well, that's because, you know, you just made this rule again. Another one. To, what is it? North Carolina. You know, ah, you gotta go in the restroom that you designed to use because you're like, gotta freaking... You gotta prick, so you gotta go in the man's room. And so I'm a prick. Okay, I'm a, no, I'm not a prick. They're pricks, for sure. But anyway, I, I'm, well, I like to dress in women's clothes. and I don't. I'm, hypothetically is what I'm saying. And say, I, well, I could say someone else does. But it gets more personal and more meaningful if I actually play the role of the, uh, you know, the, the pervert or sicko or the, or the transgender human being who just happens to be transgender or uh, likes to wear women's clothes. You know, like J. Edgar Hoover did. I wonder how many people realized that J. Edgar Hoover was a piece of shit and uh, he was also a, a, a flaming drag queen. Uh, there's anything wrong with that, but I don't know how many people actually know that fact. He used to work in his yard, you know, tending to the flower gardens and stuff, wearing, you know, female garb, a dress, which is 
pretty interesting and apparently he didn't think that was a secret I mean I'm Jade Hoover and I'm in my yard pruning roses in a dress uh, I think it was public knowledge if you happen to live in his neighborhood all right so what I'm saying is hysteria is just made up shit I mean there are justifiable reasons for being hysterical like you know there's nothing wrong with being hysterical about the government spying on us the NSA you know we're spying on everything you say everything you do all your phone calls and all your emails and shit and all the websites you visit and so on uh, yeah you should be hysterical about that you should be outrageously hysterical about that hysterical to the point of you know wanting to do something to stop the bastards from doing that since it's a crime and it is a crime because they're not allowed to do that. And young people are like, oh, sure they are. No, they're not. They never were. And never will be allowed to do that. You get a warrant like any civilized police officer, and, and then maybe you can. But until then, you don't. And if you do, and you get caught, the NSA I'm talking about, you go to fucking jail. You don't just keep your job and keep working and doing that. You know, you, you just tell me this, you know, it just boggles the mind. You know, okay, the, the NSA is spying on me. They're not allowed to do that, so they should stop. And, and if they don't stop, like yesterday, then, you know, we arrest them and uh, try them for crimes against humanity and treason and shit, and then, you know, hang them. Yep, that's what I said. Traitors hang from trees, like tree ornaments. That'll learn them, learn them. So, hysteria. You got a reason to be hysterical about things like the anti-nature agenda of some of the mind benders in this country who have recruited idiots to do their dirty work, like, you know, argue with me on Facebook and shit. Ah. I talk about this restroom mania on my podcast, by the way. Oh, that's this. I'm sorry. I was right, reading what I wrote as a post on Facebook or one of those social media places. Uh, okay. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I lost my place. I lost my place. I lost my place. I should have edited this before I started to read it. I'm having stuck to the script anyway, so it doesn't matter. I uh, kind of ramble over here, ramble over there. All right. I see no reason for a public restroom to be segregated by gender in the first place. The room itself is not the problem. The issue can very easily be remedied by, you know, if there are to be more than one occupant in the room, room, Constructing individual stalls with doors to ensure a greater degree of privacy for the individual. This false modesty thing, of course, is ridiculous in the first place, in the second place. And it never should have become a common thing in America or any place else. It's just stupid. One room, multiple privacy stalls, end a problem. This does not mean that there cannot be urinals. They can simply be enclosed like the toilets. No problem. The point is, everyone knows why we go into the restaurant and what we do there. Gender has nothing to do with it. In other words, this is false and absurd notion that genders need to be separated in a room that is obviously intended for personal body functions. It's not a secret after all what we do there. I point to the ancient Greeks as inspiration. So here's the thing. If you go into the restroom, do your business, get out. If you want to like beat people up for using a restroom that you, you know, like, oh, you shouldn't be in here, girl. You're a man and you're dressed like a woman and you're a pervert. Um, well, being a pervert is not a crime. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Oops. Oh my God. You're gonna your 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 false teeth just fell out. Yeah. Being something is not a crime. 
I can be all kind of things. I can be a homosexual. I guess in some parts of the world that's a crime. Not a real crime. Just some bastards made up the law. It, oh, we're going to make a law. It's a crime. Put us in jail. I remember one point reading that uh, Cuba, if you're a homosexual and you get caught, I don't know how they'd catch you, and I don't, I just, I don't understand what that's doing. But anyway, if you're homosexual in Cuba, you get 20 years in prison. Just for being a freaking homosexual. Um, I think, I mean, that just boggles my mind. Now, I know you're saying, ah, Cuba is crazy and uh, communists and all that stuff, but that's beside the point. But if society makes it a crime to be something, then uh, there's something really terribly wrong with that society. It's like putting, uh, like, uh, okay, it's, it's a crime to be a bank robber. Uh, actually, it's not. I use that one as an example. You can be a bank robber all you want, and as long as you don't rob any banks, then you haven't committed a crime. Because in order to commit a crime, you have to actually do something. Not just be something. Pedophile. All right? Whoa, that's a bad word. Ah, people are crazy. They hysterical. Oh, you're a pedophile. You're a pedophile. You're like, okay, so? So what? So, somebody's a pedophile. And the point is? Now, if you don't like pedophiles, then, you know, that's fine. You don't have to like them. You don't have to associate with them. You don't have to deal with them. But, you know, they have a right to exist just like you do. And if you're not a pedophile, and you're like, oh, I'm a straight guy, and I don't, uh, I don't have sex with kids and shit. Now, that's a big subject there. I don't have enough time to go into all that. But if you're worried about somebody coming into the bathroom or public restroom and, and molesting your child or your wife or whatever, then, you know, take precautions. You know, don't send your four-year-old daughter into a fucking public restroom by herself. What kind of idiot are you? What kind of parent are you? Oh, I'm going to go in there, all right, but if some man comes in there dressed like a woman, I'm going to beat the crap out of him. You know, guess what? That's that's a crime. Beating people up is a crime. Just because they come into the bathroom and they're like, oh, I'm a guy and I'm wearing a dress and I'm going to come into the bathroom to take a pee and, you know, your daughter just happens to be in there. Oh, I'm sorry. Duh. You don't have a right to beat people up for that. You're not doing anything. I is oogling my daughter peeing. Yeah, I doubt it. Seriously. And if she has a stall with a door, you know, close the door, you know, stand guard. Well, that's right. You're a man in a woman's restroom because your little daughter is a girl and she's using the girl's restroom. Because that's what, you know, oh, you got to use the restroom that you're designed to use. Like, you know, girls use girls' restrooms, boys use boys' restrooms. And, uh, well, that's that's where the stupid idea is, is screwing everything up. I mean, why? <clears throat> Seriously. You don't beat people up in a restroom just because you suspect they might be up to no good. You know, you're standing there, your daughter is using the restroom, and she's in the stall, and she should have the door shut, and you're standing guard, and some people are coming and going, coming and going, doing their business, doing their business, and you spot some guy, and you say, you, you obviously a pervert, pedophile person, you're in here to spy on my little girl and look at her pee and look at her VJ. Uh, why would you assume that? Maybe the homosexual, uh transgender person uh, perhaps the uh, pervert pedophile freaky guy actually is just in there to take a piss and you know so he notices that there are other people in the restroom like you and you know your little girl big fucking deal anyway not crying and by the way, it's not a crime to look at people when they're in a public place. I know, I know. You're not allowed to look at people in a public place. Bathrooms are not public places. Yeah, it's called public bathroom or public restroom. 
I'm sorry. The word public means what it means. That means there are other people who can go and go in there and be in there. Otherwise, it'd be called a private restroom. Words mean what they mean. So, stop being stupid is what I'm trying to tell you. Just stop it. It's just stupid. Stop it. Don't be stupid. Some people are stupid. Don't be like them. Be intelligent, like, you know, God intended. Oh, I used the word God. Shit. Um, you know, like nature intended. Be natural. And don't be a fucking idiot, for Christ's sake. Don't be don't be beating people up just because they happen to be something. I'm you know I'm a I'm a what? Uh, think of something else. Think of something else. I'm a, okay. So I, I didn't finish that thought, did I? Okay. So uh, let's just say hypothetically that I'm a pedophile. I'm not. You understand? Did you hear that? I am not. I'm just pretending to be one as for the sake of the, what I'm talking about. Someone's going to twist that around and make it sound like I said I was. I'm not. Okay, I'll use somebody else. Suppose there is a pedophile who is really a pedophile who is really sexually attracted to children. That's under 12, by the way. Not 15. Not 17. I'm talking about children. Biological fact. Children are under 12. Prepubescent. Got it? You know, once you got boobs, you're not a child anymore. Once you start your period, you're not a child. Adolescent. And the transition from child to adolescent is called puberty. You know, it's a natural flow of... Oops. <laughs> flow. Alright, so it's just a natural thing. It's the way nature works. So there's this pedophile. And he's like, you know, I'm a pedophile. And you see him, and you say, mm, you're a pedophile. And he says, mm, yeah. And then you got all these hateful things in your mind. You're like, ah, you ought to die. I kill you. I cut off your dick and shove it up your ass. You know, all kind of nasty, hateful things. Like, oh, that makes you better than somebody else, I guess. Because, oh, I'm better than a oh pedophile because, you know, I'm going to cough your dick and shove it up your ass. Or kill you. Shoot you in the head. Bam, 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 you fucking pervert. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, got a sound effect for that. Don't be stupid. He hasn't touched your daughter. Probably even hasn't looked at your daughter. Probably doesn't even give a shit about your daughter. Seriously, the statistics show that pedophilia, you know, may, there may be a certain percentage of the, of the population that are pedophiles. I'm not one, but, well, actually I'm a hemophile, which you probably won't find in the dictionary because they fuck with the dictionary, the damn socialists. And, well, the neocons too, but okay. Stop being stupid. All right, so just being a pedophile, it's no big, it's just, you know, most pedophiles that I've ever had any awareness of, <clears throat> and I'm sure I've known a few, I don't know how many, one or two maybe in my lifetime, not that I knew they were pedophiles at the time, or even now, but, you know, I'm sure that statistically speaking, you know, out of a hundred people that I meet, you know, one half of them might be gay, or, uh, Pedophile or a hemophile. No, hemophile. That's any normal male over the age of 12, by the way. You can actually find a definition of the word hemophile online. Just don't expect to find it in the dictionary called dictionary.com because that's socialist rag. <laughs> Doesn't always tell the truth. In other words, you can't always depend on some of the. Alright, anyway. I'm going to stop here, and I'll continue later.